So there's a beefy and dangerous looking new guard battle tank in town. Let's talk about the newly revealed Rogal Dawn tank and the rules that it's going to be fielded with in game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Imperial Guard. And finally, after a long time of teasing, Games Workshop have actually shown us off the Rogal Dawn battle tank, the new heavy tank for the faction that they've teased us so many times, but now we actually get to see the model in all its glory. This thing's basically a new class of tank in between the trusty Lehman Ross and the mighty Baneblade. It does have a bunch of design elements all of its own, but to me it certainly feels like a bigger and badder Lehman Ross, more weapon mounts, and a bigger gun. Let's talk about the options and details that are present on the model, and then talk through its rumoured leaks rules, and what those mighty weapons might be doing on the battlefield. So first up, reaction to the Rogal Dawn tank does seem to be broadly positive across the internet. Guard players largely seem happy with their new heavy armour. Glad that Games Workshop seems to have broadly got it right with this tank. It's certainly not always universally been positive when they've released guard vehicles. I remember the Tower Rocks coming out to some pretty mixed reception at the time. I think overall the general feeling that in the look and feel of the tank it feels maybe a bit more World War II era than World War I. But still of course having the 40k weirdness like Sponsons on the side. And both packing an enormous turret and also powerful hole mounted weapons on the same vehicle as well. A whole load of different guns on this thing to the extent where you're almost rivaling the repulsors, but I'd say organised a lot more cohesively. Despite being slightly different to several previous guard tanks, I feel like it does fit in with the range pretty well. The general look and feel of it really doesn't seem out of place to me, looks like it's quite a good bigger brother of the Lehman Rush that you might have one or two of in the tank line. There's quite a lot going on with this guy, he's got a bit of a curved frontward facing hull. A really big chunky turret with two top hatches on, plus a mantra heavy stubber behind them. The normal searchlights and smoke launchers, but perhaps with slightly different sculpts to how we've seen them on previous models. The tracks appear to have the option of both bare exposed tracks like this one, and track guards as we'll see in a second. Plus there's a whole bunch of just flavourful type things dotted around the tank to make it look a bit more practical. There's oil drums and things on the back, plus some spare tracks and things slung across the turret, and a few other bits and bobs. The guns are pretty impressive as well, there's either the option of these twin battle cannons or a big gun called an oppressor cannon, it seemed that the leaks did have those names right. The whole mounted gun is either called a pulverizer cannon or a castigator gatling cannon, this one here is the pulverizer cannon and Games Workshop describe it as the smaller brother to the demolisher cannon, basically a mini siege cannon that still looks like it would be a threat to tanks but maybe not quite as devastating. There's a couple of swivel mounted guns on the front that can either be heavy stubbers or melter guns, and then a pair of sponsons on the side, slightly set back from the front, and they're equipped with either heavy bolters or multi melters. Obviously we don't know too much about the pricing and release yet, I would guess that for the size and weight of the vehicle it's going to be somewhere between maybe the Space Marine Gladiator tank and perhaps the Votan Land Fortress, maybe around the 50 to 65 pound mark or around 80 to 110 dollars. I feel like it's perhaps unlikely to be any cheaper than say a Space Marine Gladiator, as that one does look like a tank that's a bit smaller than this one. The release date for the tank is currently unknown, we know that the Guard Codex is going to be dropping in winter sometime, so this will be coming alongside that. If they're teasing all the Guard models now, then it seems likely that the Guard launch box maybe isn't a million miles away, I'd guess that to be coming out sometime in November or early December, but whether or not they follow up with the full Codex before or after Christmas is another matter. I'd guess maybe after, judging by the Votan. For a few more pictures of the tank, here we have the Oppressor Cannon on the right, and that one's also armed with the Castigator Gatling Cannon as well. The Oppressor Cannon's a really big and nasty looking anti-tank gun, that one's got a coaxial auto cannon alongside too, and it's quite cool to see basically a mini Punisher Cannon on the hull of the tank as well. This one's also sporting all the melter options too, both the ones on the front and on the sponsons. This variant also appears to have the track guards in place as well, that appears to be a new war gear option in the guard codex that's been reimagined a bit. Apparently it will have some in-game rules giving you better save against damage worn weapons, though to be fair you could probably just field it either way and just say whether or not you've paid the points. On the top hatch I do quite like the detail for the heavy stubber gunner, basically you can have an entire guardsman basically being brave and outside of the tank's protection gunning away with that pinto mounted stubber. It looks really quite cool, though I must admit he's not really all that protected compared with the rest of the tank. Otherwise, here's a picture where you can see the top down silhouette of the tank. Again, a good view of all its weapons on show there. You can see the different hatches on the turret quite well too. Quite cool that you've basically got multiple different tank commanders directing and guiding the tank's fire while it moves up the board. 
I like the support option details as well on those track guards. It looks like there's lots of repair things like spanners, entrenching tools and things like that. And you can see some pretty massive, enormous exhausts at the back of the thing. Size-wise, it would have been very nice if they'd given us a bit of a side-by-side -side compared with the Lehman Ross. From these pictures, though, it does look like it's a decent amount wider and a bit longer too. That's judging by the heavy weapon team's base, which I think is on the new slightly smaller 50mm ones. I feel like they are going to look like pretty impressive specimens alongside the Rosses in the battle line. Hopefully they manage to get the rules right so that both the Ross and these things will be viable. I do feel like they're basically going to be competing for the exact same role with the similar sort of guns, just depending on whether or not you want more eggs in one basket or not. Still though, really cool tank. I feel like they're going to be very popular with guard players. It's really quite cool to see a more recent and updated take on a mainline battle tank for the guard from it Games Workshop. I have a feeling that I'll be picking up at least one of these myself as well. Moving on, now we've got the model revealed. I thought it would be fun to take a look through the rules. These ones come in with the rest of the leagues over the last couple of weeks from the Mordian Glory Leagues. As always, full credit to him and fully recommend checking out his channel. He's basically leaked the entire copy of a previous playtester codex, which should give us a rough idea of how the rules are going to function in-game. Usual disclaimer that there could be some tweaks or revisions since then, but it looks like this will be fairly close to how the tank actually functions when we get it on the board. Apparently this new Rogal Dawn tank is going to be a heavy support choice for around about 250 points base. I'd be kind of surprised if they would come in squadrons or anything like that. Maybe these will just be individual heavy support choices, whereas you can take a squadron of Russes. Stat line wise, these guys have got a 10 inch move, hit on 6s in combat but 4s at range, strength 8 and a big toughness 9 as previously rumoured, a mighty 17 wounds, so a few more than the Ross, they're rumoured to be going up to 13 in the new codex, 6 attacks, leadership 8 and a 2 plus save. Like the Rosses and the Baneblade variants, apparently the big guns get the turret weapon special rule, that gives them plus 1 ballistic skill so hitting on 3s and also the ability to fire out of combat too. If that is accurate and it does get left in, then that's really quite a big deal. Currently, guard tanks with the blast keywords really are quite vulnerable to just being tagged in combat and their firepower being made kind of useless. Tagging this thing just really would seem like a pretty bad idea. If that is the case, you'd be still be able to fire out with the main weapon and then use the rest of the guns to repel whatever was trying to tag them down in combat. Toughness 9 is pretty interesting as well. It means that you really would need some very dedicated anti-tank to bring this down. It'll be far less vulnerable to things like Dark Lances and Melter Guns and things, able to shrug off quite a lot of firepower with impunity. Then of course we get on to all the weapons. Apparently both the turret and the hull mounted weapons should supposedly be the same cost. The twin battle cannon apparently has a profile of 72 inches, heavy 2d6, strength 8, AP3 and damage 3. Though I must admit I do find the profile a little bit odd, seeing as it apparently has more AP than the standard one. Also, if that profile were correct, it wouldn't stack up very well versus the Oppressor Cannon. That one's got a 90 inch range apparently, at heavy D6 plus 3, strength 10, AP minus 3, and flat damage 4. And that one also comes with a coaxial auto cannon as well, so it gives you a little bit more damage from those auto cannon shots too. If those two profiles were to stand, then basically the Oppressor Cannon would be flatly superior. I guess it might be somewhat balanced if for some reason the Oppressor Cannon did cost more points than the Battle Cannons, but my guess from those stat lines is that the Battle Cannon might have some different stats. I would have guessed that they would have had more shots but less AP. I guess we'll have to see what the final version of the rule shows, otherwise at this point I'd say the Oppressor Cannon just looks flat better. Otherwise, for the hull weapons, the Pulverizer Cannon supposedly is a 24 inch heavy D6 shot, at strength 8, AP minus 2 and damage 3. It basically seems like it's got the range of a demolisher cannon, but the attack profile of a battle cannon, maybe a halfway house between the two. Or you can swap it out for the castigator gatling cannon, 24 inches, heavy 12, strength 5, AP minus 1 and damage 1. A bit of anti-infantry clearance duties there. I feel like at those profiles you could probably make an argument for either of them. I feel like maybe the pulverizer cannon might be a slight bit more impressive out of the two, though I don't think there's much in it. Otherwise apparently you get one heavy stubber included at base, I guess that's the one on the top with the top gunner. The option of taking heavy bolter or multi-melter sponsons, or I'd presume you get the opportunity to leave both of them off if you wanted to. According to this, the heavy bolters will be 10 each and the multi-melters will be 20. Finally, you have the front swivel mounted weapons, the heavy stubbers or the melter guns. Apparently they're plus 5 points each. No idea whether there's an option to leave them off or they just come stock with the tank. But at 5 points per, I think they're pretty much worth the upgrade even if they are just firing a bunch more lead down the range to take out light infantry. 
Just on raw stats alone, I think it all does look pretty positive, never mind the fact that you'd be able to layer on things like those regimental traits and potentially things like tank orders too. I guess that if you are buying in tank orders on a tank commander, then the orders might go a little bit further on these than on a standard Ross. Finally, if it blows up, then it's got the chance for a big explosion. I guess it is a really big hefty tank, but if it rolls that dreaded 6, you do d6 mortal wounds to everyone within 6 inches. Perhaps quite a high stakes one that one, if you do happen to be surrounded by other units in your army. Overall though, broadly looks positive on the rules front. I'm sure plenty of people will be keen to field them just regardless, but perhaps my biggest hope is that they manage to balance them well against the Rosses, so both of them have their uses. In any case, let me know what you think of the model and the leaks rules down in the comments below. Would you be tempted to pick one of these up for your guard army? And if so, which options would you be most tempted to arm it with? In the current meta, do you think that Pulveriser Cannon or the Castigator Cannon looks better, perhaps? According to Games Workshop, there's one more guard reveal to come. Likely that Lord Solar model, and probably next week. I'll certainly be covering that on the channel as well, and we'll take a look at the leaks rules for them then. Feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to see that. Otherwise, I would just like to briefly mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, which is how I can afford to keep on making these videos all the time like this. If you have been watching the channel quite a bit, then any support keeping the videos coming would be massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.